fighting games are my favorite genre of competitive video games. But over the past few years, they've been getting a bad rap with how people view them. The reputation of fighting games is that they're unforgiving and really hard to get into. And while the title of this video probably makes you think that I disagree, I will admit that fighting games themselves don't exactly give you the greatest new player experience. Even the best fighting game tutorials lack vital information that can get players into that competitive setting. But why is this? Why do people think that fighting games are scary? Well, fighting games have a critical feature that turns a lot of players away from them. If you don't know about something, you're gonna get your ass handed to. It's just how these games work. With no teammates and relatively low luck factor, there isn't a lot that can save you from an opponent in the middle of a match. Your knowledge and your skill are the only things that you can rely on when playing in a fighting game. And even if you're a fundamentally great player, there is a chance that you'll find yourself in a match where you have no idea what to do. Some matches, you get hit with a gimmick that you didn't know about. And you have to say, despite losing, I did everything that I could in order to try and win. My opponent simply found a flaw in my game plan and exploited that in order to get the win. I will use this information to improve myself in the future and not allow this to happen to me again, thus making me a better player. More commonly phrased as the fuck is that dude what? However, this is not something that should scare you. If you want to get into these games, you need to strengthen your resolve, collect yourself, stow your fear, and do the unthinkable actually try to play the video game. A lot of people I know are extremely intimidated by fighting games, to the point where they never actually try to get into them at all. This intimidation is something that every fighting game player has to overcome at some point, and it's completely understandable. But I have a very important message to everyone who's ever wanted to try these games, but got scared off. I promise it's really not as bad as it looks. Today, I want to show you that fighting games are nowhere near as scary to get into as they seem to be, and hopefully give some people the push they need to check out these games in a more competitive setting, or just get more into the community as a whole. So, let's talk about how fighting games aren't actually that scary. So how do we prove that this beast of a video game genre is actually just a small, well-trained puppy that occasionally tries to nibble on your thingies? Well, we can start with the easiest thing to do. Just play the game. I know saying just do it sounds like an obvious answer as well as an old as hell meme, but jumping in at the deep end can sometimes be the push that some people need to learn to swim. Hell, you might even enjoy the process of not drowning. But if you're too scared to touch the water without your rubber bands on, this advice is probably making you click off the video right now. And if that's you right now, all I gotta say is please, no, 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 don't leave, I promise. There's more new ones. I need to eat this one, please, come on. Now that I've kept you around with my witty remarks and amazing charm, what the hell does even jump into the deep end mean? Should you just queue for ranked matches and play against someone with literally no knowledge of what you're doing? No. God, no. You'll fucking drown if you do that. If you dive into the deep end with at least a little bit of theory, then you're probably not gonna sink like a rock. So we need to get you some basic skills in order to make sure that you don't just immediately crap yourself the moment your opponent throws a fireball. Now, not every fighting game plays the same. So before you start, you need to know the type of fighting game that you get yourself into. There's a lot of different types of fighting games, but the biggest ones are standard 2D, air dashes or anime games, and 3D games. Standard 2D fighting games are your more grounded, slower based games, relying much more on punishing your opponent's mistake in neutral than doing any crazy bullshit. You'll generally do a lot of things like whiff punishing and throw looping your opponent in the corner. Air dashes, or more generally known as anime games these days, focus less on the basic neutral game that you find in the standard 2D games are more on offensive pressure and mix-ups, while generally also having stronger defensive options to compensate. They also let you dash in the air. I'm not sure if you could tell by the name. 3D games add an extra dimension to combat, allowing new ways for you to dodge your opponent at the cost of aerial movement. However, they generally also have a better ground movement, allowing for a more dynamic up close game. Attacks are also generally a lot shorter and things like fireballs aren't around as much. This leads to a lot of close quarters combat and has an interesting way of whiff punishing and moving around the screen. Knowing the basic rules of whatever game you play helps 
dramatically. And I don't just mean hit the other guy and kill them. I mean the ways that the characters move, the basic types of attacks and defense, and most importantly, what a general match of the thing looks like. Knowing all of these will put you way ahead of other people at your skill level. But we can do more than just know what a general game is supposed to look like. We could even get you a good way to win. And before we do that, we need to pick your character. Picking a character in any fighting game is a rite of passage. The character that you main is an extension of yourself. Play them enough, and they will even become a part of yourself. People take their fighting game mains very, very seriously. They will fight battles for their main, cheer for other people who share their love of their character, and get into heated debates on how actually 50-50s on every knockdown isn't broken. You just need to not get into that situation in the first place. The character that you pick will define your entire fighting game experience and send you down a path that you cannot come back from is how people like to describe it. Fighting games are filled with amazing characters and diverse casts, and the likelihood is that you're not gonna get the right pick the first time you choose a character. The way that you decide your character is entirely up to you. However, the two most common methods are the easy method and the obvious method. The easy method is the one that actually takes a little bit more work, as it does not refer to the difficulty of picking a character, it refers to the difficulty of the character character that you pick. Fighting game characters come in a variety of difficulties, some of which being so complicated that you need a master's degree just to move right, and some of them being so easy that if the person playing them shows any sign of brain activity, it's considered a miracle. If you're trying to get into these games, you're going to be focusing as much on controlling your character, remembering what your buttons are, and figuring out what the definition of blocking is as you are controlling your character's specific moves. So logically, you should choose a character that you don't have to put too much brain power into. Once you feel comfortable with the game and that character, then you can switch it up and go for a more complicated character that takes your fancy. Or maybe you find out that all you needed in life is a cute redhead and a massive dog. Why is the definition of projecting on the screen? Alternatively, you could take a deep breath, tuck in your cheeks, blast can you feel my heart, and just Pick the fucking character you like from the start. The main goal here is to have a good time. So picking whatever character you want will increase your chances of just enjoying yourself. If you want my actual advice, I'd say choosing an easy character is better getting into these games completely. But if you really just want to have a good time and do silly shit, picking any character you like and finding something you think is cool could help you more in the long run. A lot of players in these games find one move that they want to land and they just go for it whenever they can. And honestly, I don't blame them. I like funny move too. Bike and parry go burr. So finding something from a character that scratches your dopamine receptors will make the game much more appealing. In fact, I would say that this is advice that everyone should follow. Even if you pick a basic character, find something in their kit that you think is cool and try to land it in a real match. You want to do the funny dolphin move in a real match? Go for it. Spam it even. That's how Donkey got to Celestial. Now you've figured out what a general game looks like, the character that you want to play, and something silly that you want to land, now you can jump into the deep end. But, but, I'm probably gonna lose. Yeah, probably. But let's be real. You were probably bad at every video game that you played when you first started playing them. You gotta figure out how to make the challenge part of the fun. For now, though, take that funny thing that you learned and try to land it in an actual match. It might take a while. But you need to keep at it, and most importantly, don't beat yourself up over it. Over just a few matches, you'll find yourself improving until eventually you land that technique in an actual match against a real opponent. And trust me, when you do it, something inside you will click. You'll get it. You just need to keep going. Fighting games aren't something that you need to know everything about. They're just another version of competitive games with just a more personal aspect when compared to general team games. If you start the game going in with something that you find fun to do or you think is funny, eventually the rest will come naturally. Just play the best you can, learn from your mistakes, keep your chin up, and you'll be a fighting game player before you know it. Hey guys, we're going to be playing Guilty Gear Exiled on stream tonight against viewers. Make sure you come on down, it'll be a good time. 
Anyway, a very special thanks to 64 megahertz, almost nap time, Ben from Canada, Savantis Leon, Daniel Wiederick, Edison Lottery, Fexo, Games.png, I'm Nauto, It's Riley, Knife and Spoon, Critty Cat, MP04, Mr. Clean, Ray W, Sergeant Cubby, Super Falcon, Tom Tanks, Velvet Puppy, Volta, and Zandatsu for being tier 2 Patreon supporters.